Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, at the end of this slide. So let me give, give a brief introduction of myself. I'm working on Power BI for more than two years. I'm having experience of uh, more than two years in Power BI. Apart from Power BI, I have worked on SQL, uh, SSMS, I have worked on SSRS, I have worked on Power BI Report Builder to generate the paginated reports, and I have worked on Sysense as well. Sysense is also one of the BI tools out there. Apart from Power BI Tableau, we have one more tool, Sysense, and there are a number of uh, BI tools. So today our main uh, motive is to understand what Power BI is, but before understanding Power BI, we should understand first what exactly is BI. So as the name suggests, BI, BI means business intelligence. Now, what exactly is this business intelligence? So in simple terms, a business intelligence, we can say it's a process that different organizations use to collect and analyze the data in order to make better informed decisions based on your business. For example, let's say we have <clears throat> a historical data for past one year. So we can take that data. Let's say that is a sales data. We can take that sales data and see in which region I'm uh, getting more sales in which region I'm getting less sales. So I can focus on those regions. I can focus on those areas why we are getting less sales. What is the reason behind that? And we can dig out the questions. We can answer the business problems. Let's say, suppose, for example, uh, we have uh, three regions. Let's say four regions are there. North, South, West, and East. So these four regions are there. Now, let's say we have our data for over, uh, past one year. So in this one year of uh, data, we saw that total sales made in North is around, let's say 45%. South, it is 25%. West, it is 20%. And this is just 10%. So we just saw this thing. So this is what our day, uh, this is what we analyzed. We got to know 45% is north, 35% is south, and west is 20%, and east is 10%. I hope so. This calculation is right. 25 plus, uh, yeah, that calculation is right. So we got to know these uh, data here. Now, based on this data, we will answer the business problems, we will answer the, we will make better decisions that, okay, we have to focus on East, why we are getting less sales. That is the next step, why we are getting less sales, how to increase the sales, what are parameters we can consider. So this is what business intelligence is. So business intelligence is nothing but it's a process where the organizations use uh, they, they collect the data, they analyze the data and they present it in such a manner so that people can make informed decisions. Now, once we generate a report, most of the cases, the reports goes to MD, le MD level of uh, organization, who is the managing director. It goes to the director, managing director, CEO of the company, CMO of the company. We basically target these audiences. Apart from it, we target the zonal managers. We try to target the uh, national sales manager, zonal sales manager. We target the territory managers. And we target the individual users as well in business intelligence. Okay. Now, uh, basically, BI enables the organization to gather the data from different sources. These sources can be your database, SQL. This can be your spreadsheets. Take it Excel, take it CSV. It can be a PDF, it can be a web, it can be any application, and different sources are there. Cloud, it can be. So then, once we gather all these data, we transform it into meaningful insights so that the person who is analyzing or who is seeing that dashboard or data, he or she is able to make better business strategies okay 
And now, uh, so this is what BI was. So what BI does, we understood. Now, what is the process involved in BI? So basically, BI involves data mining, where we mine the data, where we mine the data, we dig out the data from different sources. Then we analyze the data. Then we visualize the data. Now, after these, we try to identify the patterns. We try to identify the trends. We try to identify the relationship that is there in between a huge data set. Now, these insights that you have gained from the through this BI, what all patterns, what all trends, what all relationships you have got, what you do, you help the organization to optimize their operations, increase the efficiency. And once you do this thing, you also want to gain a competitive advantage in the market. So competitive advantage as in, let's say, um, there are two products. One is Asian Paint and one is Nerolat. So both of them are competitors. So they make better decisions to uh, gain an opportunity so that they sell more of the products. Now, when I say identify trends and patterns, what does this mean? Let me take a simple example. A first trend and pattern can be, let's say, um, you uh, must you you go to um, any of the supermarket, or let's not talk about super, let's talk about supermarket only. So there, you see what kind of trend we find. So once a person who is buying bread will also buy butter, is it? That is one of the obvious patterns we have. The person who is buying bread, most of chances are there ninety percent of people who are buying bread will buy butter as well. What else can be the pattern? The pattern can be uh, the person who is buying a soft drink or cold drinks. They will buy snacks as well. That is one of the patterns. Yeah, is it? Is it the pattern? We have these. We see these kind of patterns. This is our day-to-day -day life. This is our day-to-day -day life patterns where a person who buys bread will be buying butter as well. Most of the person, like ninety percent, this is one of the patterns. The person who is buying soft drink will buy snacks. Okay. So what these most of the supermarkets do, what they do is they create blocks. Block one, block two, block three. Let's say we have three blocks. B1, B2, B3. Now they have identified the pattern. I'll, I'm explaining you how it will help them to boost their business, to sell other products. They have uh, three blocks, B1, B2, B3. So in B1, let's say they will put soft drink. And in B3, they will put snacks. Now, what is, it, what is there in B2? B2 will have B2 shells or B2 block will have all the items that you don't buy on the regular basis. And there it will be some sale going on, buy one, get one free, or 50% discount, 40% discount, something like that. For example, you are going from B1 and you saw in B2 that there is a offer going on that on deodorant, you got buy one, get one. Buy one, get one. So aren't there chances that you will end up buying DO as well? Yes. Aren't there chances that you might buy the deodorant? I'm not saying 100%. Not all 100 uh, people who are going there will buy deo, but most of them will buy. Now, let's come back to another uh, psychology, psychology here that business pattern follows. You must have seen cards, CART cards, those cards and the big, the big bazaar and uh, uh, smart point and Spencer's anywhere. So those cards are very big in size. So they, they, they uh, make you feel that you haven't bought anything. You just have bought a bread and butter. You should buy deodorant. You should buy soap. You should buy X, Y, Z item. So what they are doing, they are identifying the trends. They are identifying the pattern 
that okay this is the pattern and we will be um getting these things out we should sell this thing out next pattern let's talk about a very common pattern let's say there is a festive season is there so in festive season what we see we see that there is a sale going on 50% off 10% off big billion days diwali sale n number of sales are there that is there during the festive season and what is the pattern during festive season we tend to buy new things and we buy new things once in a year at any festive season we buy new things so that is the pattern which we analyze and which we get to know through business intelligence and visualizing the data if i give an if i give you an excel sheet okay or you may ask that okay why visualization we can do this in excel sheet so if i give you excel sheet what you have you have a tabular data which will eventually not explain you the story clearly if you have a pie chart like this you have a pie chart let's say you have this pie chart something like this or let me better make a pie chart this kind of pie chart you have so you will see that the region number 3 is having highest sales suppose for example so you will make better informed decisions but if i give just numbers or just excel sheet it will not be easy for you you may not identify the pattern now these are the components of business intelligence the first one is data warehousing where we keep all our data just like a normal warehouse you must have seen um, a warehouse is there so where we put all our items let's say we let's say a person owns a shop so that person will not put all the items let's say electronic shop is there so that person will not store all the electronics item or all the tv or all the refrigerators there what that person will do that person will just show a demo piece and rest of that will be in his go down okay so that is what data warehousing where we where we store all the data and then we have data mining the from all the sources where we are going to mine the data then reporting we create reports analytics where analyzing the data collaboration means sharing with the users it can be a let's say if we talk about a company or product based company where for example we talk about um asian paints so asian paints will have their tsm territory sales manager they will see their own data then it will be zonal sales manager national sales manager then ceo of that particular brand and then md so that we do over here we collaborate and uh, share the share these files with them we share the dashboards so that they can have a look and create a make a informed decision about it okay now since that was bi now introduction to power bi see there are a lot of tools available out there you have tableau you have power bi you have clicksense you have sysense google studio and different sort of uh, tools are available there sap bo is there these tools are available yes r studio also uh, but that is not actually a business intelligence tool um uh, it's just a programming language where we can analyze the data r studio is not a, a bi tool so these are basically dedicated bi tool so uh, when we talk about power bi so power bi is actually a product of microsoft which allows you to collaborate or share these dashboard over a lot of places you can combine it with your ppt embed it with your ppt you can embed it with your excel you can embed it your embed it with your uh, sharepoint site you can directly show the power bi so these are the features of basically power bi there are a lot of tools available there no doubt but what 
makes Power BI stand out. So Power BI is a tool developed by Microsoft. So you have actually a package getting it. There are a lot of vendors out there who uh, create a package for their customers. You get Power BI, you get Microsoft Excel, you get Microsoft PowerPoint, you get Word, you get Teams, you get Azure, all these things combined and it costs actually less as compared to other tools. Tableau, no doubt, it's an expensive tool. Power BI is not uh, that much expensive. It's a bit cheap as compared to Tableau. Not a bit, it's a lot cheaper than uh, as compared to Tableau. Most of the companies in India, they use Power BI. Most of the companies, they use Power BI. So it's a very, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of tool that is very much in demand right now in the market. People who know Power BI are getting good packages as well. As well. They are getting good packages. So now coming over here, my, this tool actually allows you to connect with a lot of data sources, a lot of uh, different sources. Let me show you how this tool looks like. And with that tool only, we will move forward. Let me reshare my screen with the tool. Okay. Okay. So this is how this tool looks like. These are all things that we have in here. And this is how it looks like. Just, yeah, this is how it looks like. And there are n number of sources you can have. The sources, namely, are Excel. You can get it through SQL. You can get it through CSV. You can get it through web, Google, uh, Azure, SAP, and a, a lot of tools, a lot of uh, uh, places are there where you can get it from. Okay, now let me show you those places. Yeah, these are the places where you can, these are sources where you can get it from. A lot of data sources are there. Now, uh, here the question comes up that, okay, we are using it. So what are the capabilities of Power BI? So the first capability is a data modeling. It has an amazing data modeling feature over here. Then data, data visualization. You have a lot of uh, options over here, visuals that you can perform. Let me just expand it so that it's more clear to you. These are the different visuals that are there. You can even integrate your R script or Python script here that can generate a, a visual. Apart from it, you have a lot of visuals here. Now, if you don't want to use these, these visuals, you can click and get more visuals that will generate a list of a lot of visuals out here. You can see these are the list of uh, third party visuals, actually not third party that are not included here, but few are there that are provided by Microsoft, few are there which are provided by a third party that are developed by a third party uh, team. Like these, Mac, Mac is one of the famous uh, company that develops chart for uh, Power BI, but these are, these some, most of them are paid one, few of them are free. Now, that is the, the that is the thing. Then collaboration is there, and also the best thing for it is mobile support. If you want to give your dashboard to a user who does not want to open desktop, who does not want to open any computer, go ahead. You can give it on uh, mobile phones. Apart from mobile phone, you can you give it on iPad as well, iPad or tab, anything. That are the capabilities of Power BI. Now, you can use Power BI for business analytics. You can use it for sales data. You can use it for customer outstanding. You can use it for uh, gross margin. You can use it for financial reporting. You can use it for human resource, supply chain, logistics, warehousing, production, manufacturing. A lot of different domains are there where you can use Power BI. And trust me, Power BI is a very powerful tool. You can do a lot of interactive dashboarding here. 
okay now next thing that we have in here is a data preparation data preparation is nothing but a process where you identify the sources identify the different different sources and load that data set into power bi let me show you one data set that i am going to load just give me a second i'll just uh, put that data set in a folder and i'll show you how to do that yeah let me show you how to load the data set let me uh, show you how to load a data set so basically we have a uh, basically we will have a lot of sources here these sources are there which you can uh, check it out uh, okay a few things are left okay so just carry on from here recording parts we will check and let you know just a minute yeah okay so here we will be loading one csv file so you can search csv here text csv will come up and then we have this data set here so this is the one of this is one of the data sets that we have just loaded directly now here are two things loading and transforming loading was the part where you identify the source and load it in the system but but there is one thing we need after importing the data we need to we might need to clean it might need to merge create new columns pivoting unpivoting changing the data type a lot of things are there that we might do we might need to do it suppose for example the modified date here is coming in the format of date and time which we don't want i don't want this time time here what is this 000000 i don't want it so i want to change it so for that purpose we use power query power query editor in power query editor you can do all the kind of transformations let me show you how here you have load and transform data i'll show you two ways either you can click on this transform data or you load it and see here transform data this this one so this also you can click and transform the data let me show you how it looks like this is how it looks like this is how it looks like apart from it i have a few more data set that i will be loading up over here so let me load those data sets this data set we can also load it through folder directly as in we have a data set called folder but instead of folder i am showing you a very simple way you can use these these ways as well uh, just like how in this excel has a limit on total number of line items with a limit of uh yes there is a limitation with power bi as well uh, if you if you are paid like you if you have get pro version so the data limit is of 1 gb pro version this is the free version um, in pro version we have uh, 1 gb of limit of data set that you can use so these four data set i have loaded in here so this screen that you can see currently this screen this is called the uh, power query editor or in other terms we call it as transforming the data here we transform the data here what we do we clean the data we merge the data we create new columns we pivot the data we change the data type we add conditional columns we add parameters we remove the columns we remove the rows we remove the errors we append the queries and n number of things you can do here so this is uh, the data set that we have we can do a lot of things over here as i told you now what are the uh, there should be some practices best practices that we have to do while preparing the data use the standardized data formats as in if you have a column let's say suppose let's take a very small data set i'm just giving a brief introduction of everything so that uh, you know how these tools work and how these things work this is a date column since we don't have any time over here so you have to use a date instead of this so we can transform it from here 
here we have these all options. You can change the data type or you can click on this calendar button. Once you click on this, you can change the data type from here. The list is below. Fix the data type. You should have the correct data type. Should not have any um, data type which is not suitable. Like since there is no time available there, so you have to keep it as date. Okay. Now you have to use a descriptive column names. Descriptive column names as in, let's say this is the column. If I just mention ID or D or A or anything like that. Will you be able to understand if I give this, let's say, column name as um, D? Now, can you tell me what this column is? No, we cannot understand what this column is. What is D? Or, for example, I have written DID. I, as a data where I have collected the data, so I know what DID means. But let's say there is another developer working on the same thing. Will he or she be able to understand what DID means? No, that person will not be able to understand what DID means. So for that purpose, you should use a descriptive column names. You should validate the data. Once you have collected all the data, you should validate it as well. And then you have to document the process. Whatever data you, whatever transformation and things are you, you are doing, documentation is a very necessary step. Reason. Let's say in future, anything happens to your data or someone comes and changes the data set or added something that is not there. So you, you have the documentation ready with you. And based on the documentation, you will check if this is correct or not or what step is missing. So these things are important. Now, once you are done with it, just click on this button. Okay, great. Now, once you have loaded the data, first step, you identified the data source. Second step, you loaded the data. Third step, you have transformed the data. Now, after transformation, what is the fourth step? In fourth step, you have to model your data, data modeling. Now, let me explain you what data modeling is. Data modeling in simple terms is a process that helps you in creating the relationship among the different tables. For example, we have two tables, HR department, HR department, HR employee department history. So here, can you see these two columns, department ID here, and here, these two are common. These two are common. So if I want to create a connection between HR department and HR employee department history, the common column is department ID. Do you know the concept of uh, primary key and foreign key? Okay, let me give, give you a very brief idea of that in SQL. Basically uh, in SQL, if you have a table, or let's take this table only. So this is a table where this department ID will be unique and not null. You, once we are filling the data and a new department comes into picture. So this is the master data for department where you will have the department ID, department name, group name, and modified date. Modified date will automatically get into the picture, but these you will have. Now, once you have this thing, this, department ID will be unique and not null. Unique and not null, which means once a department is created, you have to have this thing and this needs to be written. If you had a new item, so it should be 17 name, group name and modified date. You cannot leave it there. So this is the primary key that we have, which uniquely identifies a row, which uniquely identifies a row. There might be two engineering names. Let's say there is group group name. If you see one, two, these are two group names. So this department ID will uniquely identify which group name I'm talking about. If I say group name, research and development, 
there are two. But if I say department ID two or one, then I, I'm clearly talking about engineering department and group name is research and development. That is the primary key. Uniquely identifies. Understood? Uh, doesn't Power BI have cell reference like Excel or? Uh, no. Actually, it does not have a cell reference like Excel. Uh, in Power BI, you don't have that. So that is the case here. Now, primary key is to clear. Foreign key, I will tell you. Foreign key is basically a column in a table that is used to identify or that is used to refer to the primary key of the another table. Let's say we have this department ID. So here department ID is not unique. See primary uh, primary key needs to be unique, but foreign key need not to be unique. So here you have, you may have multiple department ID, but foreign key is a column in the table, which basically refers to the primary key of another table. So here department ID, this department ID, you can say this department ID refers to this department ID. Yeah. Now you got the concept of uh, primary and foreign key. Yeah. Now, so that is the case. Now, if you want to join these two, you should have a connection between these two using department ID. Similarly, we have shift. So shift, we have a shift ID. I'll show you the shift data. The shift ID from here will, will be the primary key. This is primary key. And here shift ID is the, okay, Shivam, I'll explain you. Foreign key is basically, let me show you. Foreign key is a column in a table which is used to uniquely or which is used to refer to the primary key of another table. So here, if you see this department ID, this is a foreign key and this refers to this department ID. Okay. Here, similarly, the shift ID is here. The shift ID will refer to this shift ID. Got it? And then we have business entity ID. This will refer to the employee one. We have it in employee as well. So we will refer it to there. Got it now? So I'm just giving you a very brief idea of everything uh, since we cannot cover everything uh, in this uh, webinar. So we will just have a very brief introduction of everything. Now, here we have a model view where if you see, there is a connection between these two tables, these not two, four tables. Now, this is what we call it as modeling. This is data modeling. Here you see, HR employee is connected with HR department history. HR department is connected with HR employee department history. And HR shift is connected with this. Understood? There are actually uh, four types of relation. The first one is one to one. Second one is one to many. Third one is the reverse of the second. That is many to one. And the fourth one is many to many. I'll give you a very brief idea for that as well. What exactly these all look like. So let's see. I'll just draw it here only. This is at one table, one, two, three. And this is another table. One, two, three. Or let's say two, one, three. So if you see one goes to one, two goes to two and three goes to three. Each record in table A has a unique connection in table B. That is, there is no repetition of records in B. A has one, so B is also having one one. Okay, so it's a one one connection. One to one. One to one. One to one. One to one. Okay. Got it? This, uh, you might have uh, seen this in class uh, 11th. We have in class 11 mathematics, we have this our first topic, set and relations. 
or a topic is actually set and relations in which you uh, must have seen these things one to one many to one one to many many to many relationship i'll explain you again now we'll see uh, one to many so let's say we have a b c and in this we have b b a c c so if you see clearly one a has one a but one b has two b's one too many one too many one too many same goes with c one c two two c's one too many got it okay now then many to one is the reverse of it if you talk from here to here this is many to one so reverse of it let me show you how it looks like actually see one too many here there will be only one department id but one department id can be there with multiple departments for example one student can read many subjects many as in 2 3 4 5 5 whatever number you can take one but more it will be more than one one student will read more than one subject now coming to many to many many to many is a a b c or you can have uh, another b over here and let me add it here the another one b b b c c a or let me have it as a a c c a to two a's two a's they say i'm just drawing one line i'm not drawing two lines as in for two numbers i'm not drawing because it will be a bit confusing so a to a similarly goes from, uh, for b to b to b and c to b sorry c to c and then b to b so this is what we call it as many to many relationship this actually happens when there are duplicate records in that uh, thing this happens okay when we have duplicate records it actually hampers our analysis as well so we usually try to avoid many to many relationship or if there exists a many to many relationship we try to create a bridge table which contains unique record from both the tables Uh, join together, merge together, and then we join the two tables. What I mean to say is, if you have these two records, and let's say we have D as well here, so we will now create a bridge table, which will have A, B, C, and D. So this will be one to many. Star means one to many, and this will be one to many. okay so this is how we avoid the many to many relationship so is it clear till here everyone now we move on to the last step of our uh, power bi once you have done this thing here acha one more thing is there i'll just tell you last thing here this is arrow you can see so this arrow means that this hr department can filter out hr department history but hr department history cannot filter out hr department this arrow means that let me show you what if you want to have double so this will be both so yeah this means hr employee can filter out hr employee department history and hr employee department history can also filter out this but here it will not happen why server size not hr department can filter out hr employee department history but reverse is not true got it everyone okay so let me so the next thing that comes up is creating calculated measures actually measures are uh, very powerful uh, calculations available there that will help 
to analyze the data more clearly or creating the kpis for that purpose we use the measures apart from measures we can use calculated columns which can be calculated based on some logic you can do that also we can create calculated tables the same goes which you can do based on some logic these all things you can do in here apart from calculated measures you can create the calculated uh, columns calculated tables as well now when i talk about measure so measure you can say it's it's a it's a value that basically represents a kpi we can say total sales for example total sales mtd sales ytd sales dax calculation one second dax calculation okay this is the same dax data analysis expression calculated measures calculated columns we have functions just like in excel we have functions if switch sum average if error count blank like these functions we have here new measures and everything we have it at it we have it here we can create measures out of it which will you can count you can time related functions are there mtd ytd total mtd total ytd dates mtd dates ytd dates between these functions are there then you have aggregations just like you have uh, uh, sum count average these kind of functions so that is what we use measures for the so measure in simple terms are numeric values they can be a count can be a sum average minimum maximum it's more in most of the cases it is numeric value but in few cases it is not a numeric value okay you can have a percentage ratio all these things and what all kpis you can show kpis can be average order value number of orders revenue profit gross margin discount um, outstanding amount receivable amount these kind of things so measures are the values basically that is used to represent a very specific or to the point aspect of any data set as i told you total revenue It's a specific aspect of your data set. Not everything you are showing, but you are showing a particular thing or a KPI, which we call it as key performance indicators. Then uh, these are few more, uh, advanced concepts where we have DAX formulas. We have uh, time intelligence functions where you can create a rolling sales or rolling revenue. Rolling revenue as in what is my past 12 years 12 month revenue what is my past 6 month revenue what is um past 6 weeks 8 weeks 5 days day wise sales these things you can show up okay now these are few uh, best practices best practices that we do star schema as i showed you there was in center there was one data set hr department history and out of which the three were your uh, other tables now when i say other tables so do we have a name yes we do have a name so basically we call those three tables three tables if you remember we had uh, department we had uh, employee we had hr shift So these three tables are called dimension table. So dimension table, actually, it's a star schema. In star schema, we have dimension and fact table. So dimension table contains a descriptive data, like what is the department name, group name, what is the modified date, what is the starting date of the department. These things shift. all um typical descriptive data what is a shift name start time end time modified date these things and it clearly looks like a star only let me draw it for you i'll show you it so this is 
was this was your central table that was a fact table and fact table most of the times it contains a quantitative data or you can say numerical measurements just like we had in our data set we had business entity id we had department id we had shift id which you can perform quantity on it you can add it so you can count it modified date you can have some uh, sorry start date you can have some sort of start time of that employee when he started when he dropped off all those things uh, is there any other table also except for three ha huh, there are n number to uh, n number of tables you can use acha over here you are talking about apart from three dimension no there is no 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 those three were only the dimension tables rest one table that was left was your fact table so this fact connected with one dimension dim this another dim one minute this is another dim and this is another dim dimension table so dimension table most of the time contain the descriptive data okay uh, avoiding circular dependency circular dependencies basically occur when let me show you one table when you are let's say this is one table a and this is b you are applying a filter that will filter out a but in a table there is one filter that filters out b so this is a circular dependency b will wait for a a will wait for b b will wait for a a will wait for b and this thing will go keeps on going so this is what we call it as circular dependency this topic you must have heard in uh, computer science operating systems where when a resource is free or not or how to take that resource or when to take that resource these terms we you must have heard of it that is there in computer science you must have heard of it that is in the topic called operating systems we have different methods to avoid circular dependency in uh, computer science uh, like operating system these kind of dependencies occur here as well so we need to avoid that eventually you will understand this avoiding circular dependency once you learn power bi thoroughly then you will understand how to avoid these dependency now uh, in order to basically um, avoid these kind of dependencies you use uh, Uh, dynamic linking you can use uh, what we say a proper designing of the data set or modeling these kind of things okay now data visualization in power bi i have shown you that uh, multiple visuals are there you can just drag and drop your things and you can visualize the data set creating table and charts if there is it is simple there are those charts are there you can just drag and drop and put in your data set and that's it it will go on customizing visualizations um, when you plot a visual you can customize it i'll show you one visual how to customize it and how it works like works like i'll show you but first see this image these kind of visuals are there these are very common kind of visuals that we use these visuals that are used here they are all third party visuals just like stars we have image viewer long text viewer we have waffle chart these all are third party visuals this is a speedometer this is actually used in those places where you want to calculate incentive you want to calculate target those places we use this box chart we use it in stock markets you must have seen these kind of chart so uh, these kind of things are there now um again best practices are once you are plotting the data you have to choose the right visualization for example when you are comparing the data over the period of time so you will not use a bar chart you will use a line chart or area chart when you are showing a comparison between two or or between different businesses or between between categories so comparison you will use bar chart column chart if you are you want to show a single value 
great you have cards out there that you use apart from it uh, if you want to show the uh, contribution of a product we use pie chart donut chart these things okay so that you have to keep in mind you should choose the right visualization formatting should be consistent as in if you are using green color for sales so throughout your dashboard the sales should be represented in green colors in a line or a bar chart so the next thing is keep it simple simplicity is the key for your dashboard the more you keep your dashboard simple it looks fine it looks perfectly good i'll show you how to create one chart since i've shown you this thing let me show you chart as well and then you can come up with your questions let me show you these kind of charts are there so you first need to analyze what you want to show so here first you have to go to your data and how your data looks like so let's say i want to show a comparison this will not work for me job title will not work uh ha huh. let's say suppose i want to show how many married employees are there in my organization so i want to have a comparison or percentage contribution so in here i will put one pie chart you can put one pie chart drop it marital status legion and value you can have business entity id and make it count so by default it will be count so when you count it you can see these values are coming up over here now this doesn't looks good great you can do a formatting as well come here go to general title let's say uh you can give any title let's say marital status percentage you can give percentage make it normal heading type size let's say 15 or you can have 20 centralize it text color go ahead make it blue subtitle you want you can have it divided you want you can have it effects basically transparency you want you can have but we usually don't have it visual borders you can add in visuals you can change the color let's say i give it this is orange and this is somewhere around kind of purplish color let's go this you can do you can increase the text size of this make it 20 make it semi bold color black you have details values you can make it stay 18 make it black or whatever color you want basically just keep it simple it looks good you can have all these things here like this and this is how your how your chart looks like you want you can change the different uh, this as well let's say do we have any other data set apart from yeah, gender we have so you can add gender here so it will get replaced so you see gender state gender percentage or you can have understood everyone got it is this thing clear okay so that's it from my end 